Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of Charlotte Street by Danny Wallace. So Danny Wallace is like a journalist, quite humorous journalist. Uh, he's got a few non-fiction books out, including one called Join Me, where he accidentally started a cult. He's also the guy behind Yes Man that then became turned into a, a movie with Jim Carrey in it, where basically he decided to say yes to every opportunity that he had. Biggie's here as well, he wants to say hello. Um, yeah, Danny Wallace, I've been wa watching his career for a while now. He also used to be housemates with Dave Gorman, who's an another comedian that I liked. This is his first novel, and I've actually had this since 2016, and just never got round to it for some reason, and then finally picked it up as I'm cutting down on my TBR. Once this is finished, it'll take me down to 33 unread books. And um, I think part of the reason why, because I had started it, I'd read the first 20 pages or so. Um, he's not like... Uh, like up there in like a 10 out of 10 writer in the same way like Stephen King or somebody like that is you know he does there is like a little bit of a hint of amateurish to this to it but um not in a bad way or anything like that and it comes across like in his voice as well um yeah I thought it was pretty well done overall um it certainly gave me a lot of smiles but you could tell as well that like it wasn't written like if you pick this up not knowing who Danny Wallace was I don't think you'd enjoy it as much for sure so I'm going to read you the blurb and then we're going to go through and look at some of my tabs so my name is Jason, and I have just met the most incredible woman on Charlotte Street. Well, I say met. I sort of held her bags for a second, but she smiled at me, and it was this amazing smile. Of course, I don't know her name or anything about her at all, but I do happen to have something of hers. She left behind one of those old-school disposable cameras. I've got it. It's here in front of me. So there are two things I could now do. I could develop the photos, maybe work out a way of finding her, see that smile again, or I could chuck it in a bin like a grown-up. I'm fairly sure one of those ideas is a good one. I'm fairly sure the other might be illegal. Look, if you were me, what would you do? And so of course he decides to develop the photos. And that's really all you need to know about the storyline of this. And as I say, I'm gonna go through and look at some of my tabs. These will give you a feel for whether you like this, the writing style as well. So great quote here, I thought, another good thing about living practically, hope fades, but at least savings get interest. And so, um, then we have this scene because he's a writer for a magazine and he's trying to write a review and I think this is something you'll relate to if, you, if you're a writer yourself. Alex and Bob get fucked up, I wrote. Word count, six. I sat back in my chair and stared at my work so far. I liked it. I had a sip of coffee and leaned forward again. Is a film directed by Peter Donaldson. Word count, 13. I drummed my fingers on the table. Don't get distracted, I thought. Concentrate. I turned the radio on and then turned it off again. Take two guys, I wrote. One called Alex, one called Bob. Word count, 22. I added and after Alex, 23. I drummed my fingers again and looked out the window. A truck was delivering vegetables to the grocers on the corner. The man who ran the Ethiopian restaurant was putting out the bottles. I looked at my drawer, opened it, saw the pictures lying there in their packet. Jason, shouted Dev from downstairs. Favour. What, I shouted. Can you look after the shop for a bit? Powell's going to teach me a Polish love song. I closed the drawer and looked again at the word count. 23. Yeah, not bad. And then I think this is something that most people can relate to if they've been through a breakup, he says here. So that's it then. That's that period of my life over. Properly over. Sarah's going to be a mum. And I'll always just be the ex-boyfriend. Then one day just an ex-boyfriend. Then one day, sooner than you'd think, I'll be nothing at all. And yeah, I know it sounds like I'm hung up on her. And yeah, I know you've amassed enough evidence to prove it. For Christ's sake, I've written it down for you. But this is something else, this. This isn't about her. It's not my past. It's about my future. Because, one, because when one person moves on so quickly and all the other one really has is what was, thinking about what will be is difficult. I will say this character is a little bit unlikable in a kind of Holden Caulfield way, but he kind of knows he's unlikable as well, you know? And I like this. This is from um, the person who, uh, who dropped the camera. This is from her blog. P.S. There's a stock phrase I'm used to hearing on soaps or in bars if I'm eavesdropping. One person looks at the other and says, all serious, like, things change, people change. They'll accentuate the people so that we know they're talking about people, and then they'll leave a pause after they've said it so you can see just how serious they are. I think things do change, of course. But in my experience, I think often things change because people don't. He used a word I quite liked, I've never heard before, karangatans, meaning, like, rockers and metalheads. Uh, Karang was an old, um, like, metal magazine. And one scene he goes to a restaurant and because he's a journalist, the staff have all like, had uh, t-shirts printed saying like, welcome Jason Priestley from London now. And um, yeah, he says as well, it was, it was written in Palatino, which is the font I used to print my books in. 
And he talks about Camden, and I just thought this was amusing as well, and you'll be able to relate to this if you've ever visited Camden. There is something that sounds young and exciting and cool about heading to Camden on a whim. In reality, it makes me very uncomfortable. Safeguards are needed. A sturdy pair of shoes to navigate through the cricks and cracks of discarded chicken bones underfoot. A look of polite but steely determination to get past the men offering you drugs every six or seven feet, like helpers at a marathon offering cups of water. Hashish, mate, says the first man. Hashish, says the second. Hash, says the third. Just in case in the last 12 feet you've reconsidered, radically rethought your life and suddenly developed quite a craving. Why, you want to shout, what makes yours better than his? At least put some effort in. You'll never make it onto Dragon's Den with a pitch like that. I thought this paragraph was quite interesting because it's, it's true. I guess parents are the hidden victims of a breakup. They watch their futures cancelled, their wedding speeches disappear, their walks in the parks with a buggy to feed the ducks or have a picnic slide away thanks to one argument or one misdeed or one selfish act. And then they're forced to reset and hope that in another month or another year or whenever you can, you'll meet someone and they can start to secretly hope and plan again. In the meantime, they stick by your side because you're on their team. But the hope they had is gone, replaced by Billy Elliot or awkward dinners for three. I think my mom just doesn't have any hope whatsoever for my love life. And then this guy, um, he kind of loses his job um, writing reviews uh, because of this. Uh, she says, uh, you can't use the paper to plug your unsigned mates. Five stars for God's sake. What if someone found out? She's really bloody good, though. Let's talk about what else you've done while you're here. You copied press releases and pretended you went to see exhibitions you did not go and see. I went to gigs. I discovered that band. Everything you've written has been blandly positive. That's not reviewing. That's not being a critic. And um, that's something I think BookTube forgets a lot. If you ever post a bad review, you get you. you uh, there's some interesting thing here in terms of social networking as well. Funny things like Facebook or Twitter, just seeing a second of someone else's life almost, almost means you don't have to see them again. You're just, drip fe you're just drip fed their moments. You lose all the other stuff in between. It's efficient friendship. And here uh, the guy's talking about cars and he uh, clearly knows as much about cars as I do. It's a good car, I tried. But as you know, my experience is mainly limited to a Nissan Cherry covered in Calippos. Plus no one on Top Gear ever calls anything good. You have to compare cars to horses or tits made me chuckle as well. I sat down on the sofa surrounded by years of coffee rings and sandwich stains. If the police ever did a DNA test on this sofa it would be 90% disappointment. So then one of the characters is involved in a road traffic accident and we get this little exchange. You've broken your leg mate I said and I'm pretty sure you're on quite a lot of morphine. I am actually he said nodding. It's given me a remarkable sense of well-being. We should get some for the flat. Abby should make omelettes out of it. Obviously, I can't condone the omelettes, but if there is a vegan morphine omelette going, I'll, I'll give it a taste. I thought this was quite a nicely captured little moment of um, reflecting some of the stuff that women have to go through in, in society that men don't have to think about. On that note, a man tried to pick me up today by sitting very close to me on the bus and accidentally brushing his hand against mine so that he could apologise and then say, Wow, did you feel that? The electricity. But maybe it's a testament to my current state of mind that my first thought was, I hope I don't get a rash. And then this final thing I wanted to share, this really did make me chuckle. This is a, a wedding, I think. And <laughs> stupid man face, shouted someone else with great jollity. And the response was more muted. I tried to make out who it was in case I could reply with something witty. It was Michael Fish, the weatherman. So yeah, all in all, I did enjoy Charlotte Street. It does read a bit like, I mean, it's a contemporary, I guess. It reads like a, the novel equivalent of a rom-com or something like that. Um, but I'm kind of a Danny Wallace fan and I do enjoy his sense of humour. There were bits where you could tell that he's not like a seasoned professional novelist. But um, it's because he's, his background's more journalism, I guess. And so it's not necessarily what he's best at. He's best at these, you know, communicating these ideas and, and also making you laugh as well because he's a humorous journalist. And I think that all comes across quite well in this. And over, overall, I did definitely enjoy it. Can't believe I left it waiting for four years and then finally gave it a four stars. So there's my rating. And uh, I would recommend it. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Charlotte Street by Danny Wallace. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.